I read that you did your own David Letterman type of show right. at school, right? Yeah, so when I was 16, my friend Craig Brosco, uh, he was the anchor on what was kind of started out to be a fairly serious news program about whatever was going on in the high school. So I think it came out once a month. Right. So um, it was current events. Yeah, yeah <laughs> incredibly <laughs> current. Um, whatever happened in the previous 30 days. So a lot of sports scores. <laughs> right. But because I was on the newspaper uh, class, you know, the, the people putting together the high school newspaper, I think they asked me um, to do a, um, a piece for the show, and they suggested that I do a piece on how the town of Cyprus got its name. And they gave me a, a, a local article that was in the local paper um, with all the facts okay. about how the town got its name. And so... I was very into David Letterman and how just sarcastic he was. Um, so I, I wrote a very, very sarcastic, hard-hitting news piece on how the town of Cyprus got its name, where I was going to dig into the uh, investigative journalism part of it um, and, and spoke very seriously to the camera about you know the things I uncovered. And then it turned into jokes like um, there was a diner that I lived across the street uh, from called Al and Maggie's, and then one day, it just was Maggie's. <laughs> and Poor Al. So, yeah, so I did a whole segment on, like, what happened to Al and where is he and, um, you know, where has he disappeared to? So it was just very sarcastic, and um, they really enjoyed it. So then slowly over the next couple of years, my friend Craig got too busy to do the show, and it just kind of, like, became a show that I hosted and just did a comedy show, basically. But a few years back, there's a comedian, Jen Kirkman, who did a show at UCB where she said, bring old embarrassing tapes from when you were young. So I brought the tape of me with the show and, and I played it. And after the, the show, she said to me, you were supposed to bring something you'd be embarrassed by, not something you'd be doing now. <laughs> and Basically, you hadn't changed. I hadn't changed at all, you know, <laughs> which is, you know, not the greatest news to hear. <laughs> or maybe it's that, you know, you were you were right where you wanted to be all along. I mean, I think I, I was very just drawn to David Letterman's, you know, sarcasm and, and, and not taking the world too seriously. And I think that became sort of a through line in my personality for uh, quite a long time where teachers would get very upset with it. And, you know, I went to an acting school that was very, very serious. And they could never quite understand that side of my personality or why I would be doing the the weird things in my school projects that I would be doing. Like, what's an example of that? What's a picture in your head of the weird things? Well, the worst one that, that almost got me kicked out of school was I had a, uh, a project for my ballet class where um, all we were supposed to do is incorporate some of the moves we learned in ballet into it. <laughs> but my friends and I, instead, we decided to, first I got up and read a speech about the uh, environment and how our world was crumbling <laughs> um, and that this dance would reflect that. And then we did a, a full dance to Michael Jackson's Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, which is a six and a half minute long song, I believe, where uh, it was called Ecosphere 90, I believe, where uh, one of us was a bird, one of us was a cat, and one of us was a worm, and we were all chasing each other around the stage doing See, ballet this moves. was the video you were supposed to play at UCB. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so then, the, so that would have been bad, bad enough because we weren't really taking it seriously, but we had the, the funny idea because don't Stop Till You Get Enough, maybe you know this, is track one on Off the Wall. Yes. We said, what if we then, like, everyone applauds, the song's over, what if it just rolled right into track two, uh, and we played poker during the entirety of act two? <laughs> and the song ended, we're all posing, and then the next song starts, and we sit down, and we start dealing each other a poker game, and that lasted about a minute where the, the instructors finally figured out nothing was going to change and they were just gonna be watching poker for the rest of the song and they got up and stopped it. And I got called into meetings and I was just trying to explain like it's an art piece and some people, students were like, brilliant. Like they got it, but the teachers, rightly probably, were like, you're not taking this seriously enough. And so that that's always been sort of the push and pull of of my career in a way 
before I got into comedy is, is like, you're not taking things seriously enough. You're not taking things seriously enough. And when I got into comedy, it was like, oh yeah, this is great. You don't take things seriously enough. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you wanna see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm gonna give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.